Hello everybody and welcome again to Vacuum Exposition. I of course am Carl, uh, coming to you a week in advance actually. So for those of you watching uh, on the day that this is coming out, I am actually in Scottsdale, Arizona for the Barrett Jackson Auto Auctions. Uh, with my dad and brother. Uh, it's just kind of a guy's trip that we decided to do this year. So I am off doing that and attending auctions and all of that. For those of you that watched last week's video, thank you so much. And uh, I can tell you that River definitely uh, appreciates the fans. Um, anyways, so for those of you that have been noticing, I have been trying to do some different things with the channel. Uh, over time. So I uh, I did try the vacuums rescued uh, and I would love to know if that is something that you guys want to keep seeing. Uh, if you want I can do uh, other types of videos uh, aside from the exposition if you want to see more car stuff. So um, if that's the case feel free to uh, leave a comment below. I'm about a year now into this uh, this whole YouTube thing and I'd really like to see where uh, this uh, year is gonna go and start planning some stuff out for you guys. I have a, a, a lot of things already uh, planned for this year, but uh, there's definitely more to come. So again, if you could, uh, if you have any suggestions, please leave them down below because I would love to uh, read through them. And I do try to respond to every comment or at least uh, like every comment just because I do appreciate uh, when you guys interact with the channel. Um, so, without further ado, let's get on to today's exposition uh, and take a look at a really cool one. All right, everybody. So, what we are looking at is a piece of maroon 90s goodness. What I have for us today is a 1991 Black & Decker model CA1440 canister. Um, of course, it is missing its hose and power nozzle, and I'll show a picture of what those look like right here. But they are still a very, very hard to find machine, and I'm very happy to have it. Now, when it comes to the history of, of these Black & Deckers, uh, we didn't see a lot of them here in the United States. Dare I say we never saw them here in the United States, because um, as far as I can dig up, these were a Canadian exclusive vacuum cleaner. So it is very rare to find these down here in the United States. Um, per information from my good friend, Doug Smith, these particular machines were found exclusively in consumers distributing catalogs and warehouses uh, throughout the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so the earlier machines to this had a kind of a cream and white color, uh, and I'll show a couple pictures of the ads for those right here. But those would evolve into this. Um, now I wasn't able to find the ad for this particular machine. They are out there, but uh, unfortunately I could not find a catalog page for it, but rest assured they were basically the same as the white one that was offered, just maroon. So these Black & Decker machines uh, throughout the late 80s, early 90s, uh, were actually built in Korea and then uh, imported over to Canada and sold uh, as kind of a budget line to uh, the Hoovers and other things like that. Uh, as far as price-wise, these topped out at around 298 Canadian, uh, whereas it's about 220 uh, American here. Uh, so they weren't cheap, but they definitely uh, weren't, you know, like premium Kirby rainbow type pricing either. Um, now, just because they may have been a little bit more on the budget side did not mean they didn't get uh, the features of more deluxe machines that uh, would continue on uh, well into, well, today, we still are seeing some of these features. Um, now, where I found this little machine, uh, this was actually found by my good friend, Jared. Uh, unfortunately, it was missing its hose and power nozzle wands and such, uh, and I'm guessing those all got separated at the same time uh, because, unfortunately, sometimes that happens when things go to the two goodwills or thrift stores and whatnot. 
uh, but it does come with a lot of really cool features. Now, in discussing the features of this uh, fantastic little machine, uh, I did want to put it up on its back to show you guys kind of what we're looking at. Now, what we see here, this is our control panel. This is very reminiscent of things like the Hoover Spirit or the Hoover Dimension canisters uh, that would come out around the same time. Uh, but what we are looking up here is, first and foremost, we have our on switch right here. Um, you can tell because of the way it is. Um, of course, that's just a push switch, and it's uh, quite the hair trigger when it comes to turning this on. You barely have to touch that and it turns itself on. Um, now, coming to the middle here, we have more of a control panel. Uh, you have this slide, as well as you have this little gauge right here. Up here, this is your bag full indicator. So, as your bag would get full in this machine, um, it would, of course, fill the bag up. Uh, but it would also cut off suction. So as that would happen, as more and more suction would get cut off, this little orange bar would continue all the way to the full line. Um, as well, this slide right here, this is actually a power selector. Now, a lot of deluxe Hoover machines would come with a sliding power selector uh, that also would later become more of a digital power selector on certain uprights and canisters like the Dimension uh, or the Concept 2 electronic, but these, much like a Panasonic as well as others, had just a slide. So you could change it from floors, carpets, upholstery, and drapery um, to adjust your suction flow so that you can, you know, handle more delicate uh, cleaning. On the other side right over here, this is your foot actuated cord rewind. So um, kind of like that little Bissell zing we were talking about recently. Uh, once you pull that cord all the way out, uh, as soon as you're done using it, you just push this and it comes back in just like that. Now, uh, as for tools, this came with onboard tools. I know it doesn't really look like it very much, but all we gotta have to do is open door number one and there we are. Uh, of course, these thankfully didn't get lost when the hose and the extension and power nozzle went missing, uh, but it did come with an upholstery brush, uh, a dusting brush, as well as your crevice tool. Now, I did say that that was door number one. The reason why I say that is because we had door number two, which was your bag. Um, now, as we can see right here, we do have a Genuine Black & Decker Type A1 dust bag. Uh, it is brand new, so uh, from what I can tell, whenever this was donated, uh, the thrift store, maybe even the previous owner, uh, actually changed the bag and put a brand new one in, it's just so that the next person would have it all ready to go. So that is the inside of the machine. So, and of course, it is a pretty deep canister. It is very reminiscent of a Hoover Spirit, if you'd ask me, um, but very, very well done, very well made and designed. Um, this is a very dense machine. It is very heavy. The Spirits, they're kind of like a piece of Tupperware with a motor inside. They're pretty lightweight, but they do a really good job. This thing, I know, has a lot of suction and it is very heavy, so those that had these back in the day definitely had a really nice machine. Um, of course, you'll look right here, we will see the hose end, and then a very interesting triangular looking uh, power nozzle port, which is kind of the reason why I won't be able to find another power nozzle for this, or one that will fit it uh, without having to modify the plug the ex on an existing one. So, well, let's take a look at the run demo on this. I'm just gonna test suction uh, and uh, show you guys how that uh, bag full indicator works because I think that would be really cool as well as kind of run it through the different speeds. Um, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we are all plugged in and set up to do the run demo on this machine. It is, um, like I said, it does have the multiple speeds on the back. So I'm gonna start it at the lowest speed and just kind of ramp it up from there uh, and then we will uh, test the bag indicator so let's start off with uh, turning it on right here
that is our drapery setting. So low power, just enough to do the very lightweight drapes. We moved up to upholstery, so you're getting a little bit more oomph to it, so you can do those couches and everything and not uh, overdo it. Now we're doing carpet, so we are going to need a little bit more power to get through that nap of the floor. So a lot more power here. And this is our floor setting for hard surfaces, uh, just generally because they need a lot of suction to pick that stuff up directly off of, you know, your hardwoods or your linoleum and such like that. So those are the four speeds that we saw with this machine. Um, now, like I said, a lot of other machines did have that type of feature when they were uh, being released, which was a big selling point. But, uh, you know, it is definitely a deluxe option for uh, canister vacuum cleaners. So next up, I'm going to test the full bag indicator, uh, and I'll have you guys and zoom in right here, and you just watch that orange bar move uh, all the way to the full. So let's get it turned on again. Now, as you probably noticed, it didn't go all the way to the full mark. Now, the big reason being is that, well, you are still getting a level of airflow. Even with my hand over the hose opening, it is still getting a level of air, which is not going to make that bar go all the way. Now, if this bag was completely full of hair or, you know, dust particulates over like a six to seven month time span of doing a normal vacuuming, you know, two, three times a week, then we'd be looking at a full bag, like a, a really full bag. So, um, but that is how this little machine works. Um, I realize that we are a little bit limited not having a hose to do a run demo, but I do hope you guys uh, enjoyed what we were able to look at today. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our little exposition on the 1991 Black & Decker model CA1440. It truly is a really interesting and remarkable machine considering that uh, it very well could have come down from Canada uh, and now it's uh, being able to be shared with you guys. So it is very cool. I'm very happy to have it and of course a big thank you to Jared uh, for letting us have this one. Uh, this one is uh, going to be uh, staying in my personal collection so uh, and I absolutely love having it around. Uh, it is a pretty important piece of vacuum history for the 90s anyways. Um, so, and of course, if you guys are very interested in the 90s stuff, I know I have been doing a lot more of the 80s, 90s stuff lately, but uh, if you want to see more, please let me know because uh, I have really been getting into it a lot lately and uh, it has been opening up a lot of interesting doors. So, um, but uh, anywho, you guys all have a great rest of your week. Of course, I, like I said, I'm still in Arizona, so uh, I will try to get back safely as usual. But uh, you guys all have a great rest of your week, and we will see you next Sunday. Uh, same place.